you guys are fucking insane. I swear to fucking God, what the fuck is wrong with you? This was made for my friends, but I am a slave to capitalism and I want money, so I'm making this. Are you happy now? This is for your cats into the wild as told by Robin. A couple of things before we start. English is not my first language, so some things here are in Swedish. You're just gonna have to deal with that. I stutter and like slur my words together a lot, and again, you're just gonna have to deal with that. This is barely edited. I don't have the patience. Sorry. There will be a lot of mistakes. Don't kill me for it. Uh, also, this was made for my friends who have not seen Warrior Cats, so the script is made with that in mind. Most of the people who watch this probably already know this stuff, but again, this was not originally made for you guys. Uh, by the way, I lied. I did edit a few things. This is also edited in. Um, I wanted to mention also that I'd recommend watching this when it's like late and you're overtired and you can't think because my jokes are only funny when you don't think uh, and when you're it's only funny when you're in stupid dumb dumb mode don't rely on me to be funny just by myself I am relying like mostly on external uh, factors the factor that you will be dumb yeah you need to be dumb to have fun watching this also turn the captions on my uh, it's I'm intelligible at some points because I can't speak uh, because I'm dumb. So, yeah. Anyways, let's get into it. Uh, in the prologue, we see lots of kitty cats fighting and one named Redtail screams, retreat, retreat. And in response to that, another cat named Tiger Claw says, um, no, that's for weaklings. Anyways, we don't actually care about that anymore because we quickly switch perspective to see Bluestar look at the stars with Spottedly, the medicine cat of a clan named Thunder Clan. Bluestar is sad because her clan doesn't breed enough, and Spottedly reassures her by telling her that Star Clan, their ancestors, gave her a prophecy that says fire alone can save Thunder Clan, which Bluestar thinks is weird because fire is kind of deadly to cats, but Spottedly has never been wrong before, so you know, sure, sure, this, this seems legit. Um, moving on. <laughs> Rusty, a normal ass house cat, dreams about being out in the forest and catching and eating mice. This means, in his mind, he should go into the forest. And his friend Smudge is like, no, no, Rusty, that's dangerous. There are wild cats out there and they will, like, eat you and they will tear you apart. But Rusty goes anyways. And he immediately gets attacked by a wild cat. He tries to flee but realizes he's too short to jump onto his fence in time to get away. So he turns back around to get beat up some more. Two more wildcats emerged from the bushes because they were secretly watching this and they thought he was quirky and special for not just fleeing like a normal house cat would do. Bluestar realizes Rusty is a ginger and gingers are great for fire fuel, so she asks him to join her clan. And, you know, what is a clan? There are four clans in the forest. There's Thunder Clan, River Clan, Wind Clan and Shadow Clan. In each clan, there's a leader, a deputy, a medicine cat, multiple warriors and apprentices, elders, queens and kids. Nobody cares. Um, and Blue Star is the leader of Thunder Clan. There are two. The other two cats here, they are Lionheart, who is a warrior, and Greypaw, who is an apprentice. Um, by the way, all the cats are religious and they're in a cult. Just, you know, fun fact. Uh, they all follow a code for how they're supposed to live, except nobody follows the code. Nobody cares. Um... So what is this code? Well, these are the only rules I care to mention, right now at least. Uh, one, you get to have friends in other clan, but uh, be ready to fight them in a battle, lol. Two, stay in your territory, bitch. Three, apprentice is six moons plus only, and mo moons mean months, by the way. Um, four, deputy becomes leader after leader dies. Five, mark your territory and fight the cats who intrude. Six, do not hurt kittens. Uh, and no, you don't get to be xenophobic towards kittens. Uh, they're called kits, by the way, in Warrior Cats. We don't call them kittens. We call them kits. Quirky like that. Seven, don't kill other cats if you don't have to. Uh, this only goes for clan cats, though. All other cats are free game. Eight, you are not a kitty pet. You are not allowed to be a kitty pet if you're a clan cat. Nine, all clans are important, so if you need to help each other, to you, you need you need to help each other. So there are four clans. Just don't let, don't let one clan go away or die. That's no sir, not good. Um, and you know Rusty isn't sure if he should join Thunder Clan because would the clans really fit him? All they, they fight a lot. 
and you know it seems like it's dangerous and shit. But then that's when Blue Star says something that makes Rusty say yes. And can can you guess what it is? What is it that Blue Star says that is so profound? Well. Yeah, join us and lose your balls. I am barely joking, like, genuinely. She says that he won't stay as Tomcat if he doesn't join them. He will be castrated by the cutter if he stays with his housewalk. And uh, he's co he's convinced. So anyways, the next day Rusty goes to Thunderclan with them, but all, can all clan cats are xenophobes because, you know, you're not allowed to be a kitty pet. No, no. So one of them challenges Rusty to fight. And Booster thinks this is A-OK -okay, and Lionheart thinks Rusty should prove his worth. So, you know, he fights, you know, Rusty is six months, he's six months old, by the way, Rusty is six months old. He fights and he wins over Longtail, who is a warrior who just completed his warrior training. So not only did Rusty manage to cut Longtail's ear off, but Longtail manages to pull the collar of Rusty. And Blue Star, she thinks this is a sign that Rusty, he, he should join ThunderClan. Um... And you know, because the clans are cold, Rusty gets his brand new warrior cat named Firepaw. Because Blue Star is fixated on the idea that he's the ginger, I mean the fire, that will save the forest. And you, you know, uh, warrior cats has a naming system where each cat has a decided prefix, usually given to them when they're a kitten. And a suffix that changes depending on rank. So the prefix can be anything, kind of like, you know, frog, gross, grass. Um, so for kitten, the suffix is kit. Um, suffix, wait, fuck, I should mention that before the people who don't know. Prefix is the thing that comes before and suffix is the part that comes after. So yeah. Um, anyways, for kittens, the suffix is kit, which by the way, kittens are called kits and warrior cats. Oh, I said that before, I should have, yeah. Anyways, um, the kits are cats under six moons, uh, moons being months. By why did I say this before when I have it clarified back here? What the fuck? No, no anyways. Um, the suffix paw is for apprentices, and those- that, uh, Apprentices are those who are training to be warriors, by the way. Did I say that before? I don't know. Anyways, star is for the leader. So warriors get personalized suffixes that the leader chooses for them. Like, for example, Lionheart. He has the name with the implication that the suffix hard is for being noble. Like, in the first books, at least, that they don't care about that later on. I love warrior cats. Um... <clears throat> Anyway, in the middle of Rusty, now Firepaw's naming ceremony, a cat runs into Thunderclan camp, screaming and crying. He says, Rurritin is dead! And then he starts, starts explaining what happened in the battle, but, you know, gasp. He dramatically faints halfway through. Um, and, oh my god, you remember the prologue where the cats were fighting? Well, they're back now, yay! Tigerclaw drags in Redtail's dead body and says he died in battle, and also he avenged his death by killing Redtail's killer, which, you know, that's kind of against the warrior code, but nobody cares about the warrior code if it's not convenient. So everyone just goes straight past that. Uh, and, you know, everyone is so sad that one of their cult members died. We also learned that Redtail, he's not just any normal cult member, he was actually the deputy. Because Blue Star now is busy with the fact that she and those who were closest to Redtail should share tongues with him last one one last time. Uh, as in they will lick him. Uh, and they're also going to pray to their gods and shit. Great Paw, he's the one who gets to show Fire Paw around camp. And also because it's not canon right now, Spotted Leaf, who's the medicine cat, she does not care at all that Redtail, her own brother, just died. Uh, she would carry just the same amount if literally any other random ass cat in her clan just died. Um, and Tiger Claw, he tries to wake up Ravenpaw, who is his apprentice and not just- He's not dead, he's just unconscious, by the way. Uh, before Redtail spots him and then he stops. Di Tiger Claw, he's such a good mentor. Uh, and Spotted Leaf, who is so su super silly and so goofy, teases him about even he wouldn't argue about a venison cat. About how he wouldn't even... Okay, I give up on English. Um, <clears throat> anyways, everyone is xenophobic. So because of this, Firepaw immediately... He immediately gains two bullies named Sandpaw and Dustpaw. They think he's stinky because he's a kitty pet. Real strong masculinity... <sighs> Real strong masculinity cats smell like piss and dirt. By the way, this is our friend to you for this book. Graypaw and Ravenpaw are Firepaw's friends. We catch a few glimpses into the wonderful personalities of our main characters and their mentors. Tiger Claw keeps calling Ravenpaw a weak little pissy poor kitty ca catty. 
Uh, and he bullies him because he's not a real man with real strong masculinity. Because he's injured. And real men, they bear their pain in silence. And Lionheart does not care. He thinks this is normal and fine. Firepaw is obviously perfect at everything and anything he tries. And even Tiger Claw says so. Before using that as another way of bullying Rayman Paw. Because Rayman Paw has been an apprentice longer and yet he still sucks ass. Um, and Rayman Paw is afraid of Tiger Claw. I, I wonder why. Anyways... During Firepaw's first hunting solo mission, he gets attacked by a random ass cat who literally word for word says, Ah, a puny apprentice. Easy prey for Yellowfang. Very cozy. Uh, and pretty much immediately, Firepaw shows he's a great cat to have in your clan because he beats her up. Uh, and then he feeds her. Because she said she was hungry. And if she wasn't hungry, he would be powder now. And then she screams at him to kill her to prove he's not pathetic. Uh, he does break the code though, because he also takes a bite of the food he gives her. And while he does that, he gets caught by Bluestar and a patrol she's leading. Bunsies. Uh, Yellow Fang, the cat who just tried to eat Firepaw, is from Shadow Clan. But what makes this confusing is that she's not just any Thunder Clan, uh, Shadow Clan cat I meant. She's the Shadow Clan medicine cat. And, you know, in this book, this matters a lot because the cats don't know where the other clans have their camps and, like, Firepaw, I mean, kind of led Yellowfang to their camp, apparently. I don't know. Uh, and now, yeah, Firepaw is there, basically dragged an enemy warrior into their camp. In later books, all clans know where everyone's camp is. Uh, another difference is also that in later books, medicine cats can go into any tra territory because they are quirky and special. But this does not apply to the earlier books. <laughs> Inconsistent writing core, XD. Um, Bluestar decides that Yellowfang is now their prisoner and she punishes Firepaw by making him Yellowfang's slave. She also says that she herself will be Firepaw's mentor, which doesn't seem like a punishment because she's the leader and being the leader's apprentice is seen as an honor. But upon being questioned about this, she just says, mind your own business and everyone shuts up. Yellowfang immediately shows her kindness by bullying Firepaw for being a bad smelling stinky little kitty pet and gross. And then Firepaw says she's gross too, and she thinks he's so cool for that. As the reward, she tells him to go to that pretty little medicine cat of yours to get medicine for her wounds. So he does just that, but the thing is that Firepaw is in love with F Spotted Leaf because she smells so good. And by that I mean she smells so incredibly good that her scent is mentioned like all the fucking time for some reason. And she is also like, as Yellowfang said, she's very, very pretty. She's so, she shows no interest in Firepaw because he's a child and she's an adult, but don't worry. In future books, she will speak to and about him like she was madly in love with him and like they made out every single day for eight hours. Even though that is forbidden because she's a medicine cat. Later we get some more bullying because Sandpaw and Dustpaw are mean to Firepaw. And Yellowfang screams at a couple of kittens and Firepaw speaks more to Spotterleaf and it sounds so bad for her. He hangs out a little with Ravenpaw and Graypaw. And wow, more lore! Because each full moon, each, uh, cats of every clan gather by a place called Four Trees, which is in the middle of all territories. During this gathering, it is noted that the cats of one clan, Wind Clan, are missing. Um, and, uh, you know, Shadow Clan's leader, Broken Star, says they should start this meeting early without Wind Clan. Why? Because he wants to diss all the other clans for not having a lot of kits, because they froze to death during the winter. Before he talks about how Shadow Clan kids are superior because they learn strong masculinity and are hardened instead of dying, and therefore Shadow Clan has lots of kids. Because Shadow Clan has such incredible be breeder balls, according to Broken Star, they need more food or their kids will starve. The solution? Shadow Clan should get to hunt on other clans' territories too. He tries to guilt trip everyone first by mentioning how their kittens will starve, but then that doesn't work. He does the gaslight gatekeep girl boss method, which means he tells everyone Wind Clan has, was driven out by Shadow Clan, and that's why they're not at the gathering. He threatens to do the same to everyone else if they don't share their territory. And Crooked Star, the leader of River Clan, has uh, already agreed apparently, but then the Broken Star, reliable as he is, tells everyone that they kicked out a kit killer from their clan. And the Thunder Clan assumes this to be Yellowfang, but Bluestar thinks everyone deserves a fair trial and they have no proof that Yellowfang specifically is a kid killer. Um, yeah. Bluestar does not know what to do with all of this though, so she decides it would be best to contact her dead ancestors. How does she do this? 
by going to the Moonstone, which lies outside all the territories and is a spiritual place for the cats. Moonstone is a big ass crystal that like, that, like it, it glows because it reflects light from a hole in the roof in, of the cave that's in. That it's in. Um, <clears throat> she brings fire paw. Fuck. She brings fire paw, gray paw, raven paw, and tiger claw with her because why not? She says every apprentice should go to the Moonstone at least once before becoming a warrior, but this is literally never mentioned for anyone else ever again. Uh, they go to the Moonstone, but Tiger Claw is apparently scared by it, and no, this is never brought up again either. None of this matters, though, because Starkland says, ugh, because all Starkland says is to Blue Star. What the fuck? None of this mattered, though, because all Starkland says to Blue Star is that oopsie daisy, there's trouble at camp, so they need to go back. In other words, the whole journey was unnecessary because Blue Star might as well just have stayed home, and she would have gotten the exact same information. On the way home, they pass by through a farm, and there's a cat named Barley. Barley is a cowboy, and he's nice. Uh, but he does give them bad directions, which ends with them fighting rats and Blue Star dies. Yes, she's killed by rats. Whoops. Um, it's okay, though. She's a rise, because she's a leader, and leaders have nine lives. So, yay. Anyways, while they're gone, it turns out Shadow Clan is evil, so they attack Thunder Clan, so Lionheart dies. And a few other clad- other- ugh. And a few other cats, but who cares? Yellow Fang saves some children despite hating them and killing them according to Blue Broken Star, but yeah. Uh, Blue Star decides that Thunder Clan, uh, now that it's missing a deputy, needs a new depu deputy, and that deputy should be Tiger Club, because he's prime deputy, mat uh, deputy material, despite be there being like so many much better cats shown, like White Storm, who has been shown to be noble and white th throughout the entire book. But okay, I guess she's, she's the guy with anger issues who kind of abuses his own apprentice. That's a good choice. Uh, for no reason at all, except she senses they want her to tell him now. Spotted Leaf tells, tells Firepaw, like the night after everything that just happened, that Starcloud spoke to her mo months ago. And they just to tell him that Fire alone can save their clan and that he should take care. And then she leaves. Um, yeah, anyways. Do you remember Ravenpaw? Yeah, you remember Ravenpaw. He has decided now to tell Firepaw and Greypaw that Tigerclaw murdered Redtail and he is therefore the traitor. Why didn't he tell them before now? Because he's scared of Tigerclaw, I guess. Um, because Firepaw and Ray Greypaw are such horrible actors, Tigerclaw starts to suspect that Ravenpaw has told his secret to them, so he starts spreading rumors that Ravenpaw is a traitor. Nobody thinks it's weird that a fully grown adult is talking shit about a kid, so everyone just stops trusting Ravenpaw. Funsies. Uh, anyways, Shadow Clan attacks again, and this time Spotted Leaf dies. Firepaw is very sad because Spotted Leaf smelled so good and was so hot. Yellow Fang and a couple of kids have like disappeared, and Yellow Fang hates kids. Broken Star said so, so of course it's her fault. Uh, this entire situation gives Ravenpaw so much anxiety that he can't stay in Thunderclan. He needs to leave because Tigerclaw wants to kill him. So yeah, he does. Then Firepaw and Greypaw find Yellowfang and she explains that she left as soon as she realized the kids were gone and she smelled the scent of, Shadow Clan, of the Shadow Clan warrior uh, Clawface. Yes, his name is Clawface. It's literally so emo. Uh, she, she smelled him in the nursery. Anyways, um, that was confusing, sorry. Uh, she also says that she was not the one who killed the Shadow Clan kids, but actually it was Broken Star because he's a kid killer and he abuses kids and he makes them become princesses when they're three months old. Which, that's too early and a big no-no in the code, and Firepaw believes her immediately. Um, Thunder Clan gathers a patrol led by White Storm and they go to attack Shadow Clan to drive out Broken Star. They find a couple of old cats from Shadow Clan along the way who Broken Star kicked out because he's ageist and only likes kids. Uh, and then they fight Broken Star and his closest followers. Yay! Uh, Firepop finds Spotted Leaf's murderer, Clawface, and he's like mad and stuff about it, but nothing happens except he says, Oh my god, how dare you! And he bites him like one time before Clawface runs away. Uh, anyways, Yellowfang confronts Broken Star, which leads to him monologuing about how one, he killed the kids, and two, he killed his dad, who was the previous leader of Shadow Clan. It's, it's like, Literally nobody asked, Broken Star. Uh, everyone boos him for this, so he and his closest followers flee. Yellowfang decides she no longer likes Shadow Clan because they kicked her out to like slay queen, know your worth. 
Uh, and Blue Star lets her become the Thunderclan's new medicine cat because Butterleaf is dead. So they need a new one. And Yellow Fang agrees, but nobody in Thunderclan trusts her. But that's okay, it happens in later books. Uh, Tiger Claw says it's very suspicious how Ravenpaw is suddenly gone right when they fought Broken Star and Firepaw in response. Says that Ravenpaw is not a traitor because he is dead. <laughs> and everyone accept this, uh, they accept this, and nobody cares ever again that Raypaw, Ravenpaw is gone because he was completely bitchless. Uh, and despite being younger than Sanpo and Dustpo, who you should remember to be Firepaw and Grey possibilities, if you don't, you're cringe. Uh, Firepaw and Greypaw become warriors, while Sanpo and Dustpo do not. Blue Star gives them their cool warrior names, these being Fireheart and Greystripe. Uh, Fireheart tries to tell Blue Star that Tiger Claw killed Redtail, but Blue Star tells him to shut the fuck up because they they need to play the silent game for the rest of the night because he just became a warrior. This is part of the warrior code, so Firepaw does indeed shut the fuck up. The book ends with Greypaw and Firepaw sitting vigil the rest of the night. And for this book, this one book, there are five more just in this arc. Warrior Cats is eternal suffering. Thanks, that's it, bye.